Greetings, Star Trek Fleet Commanders. I am the Angry Rhino. Yay, new patch. Now, <clears throat> before I get into this, yes, there was leakage and intentional showing or releasing of information last night. Yeah, I kind of thought about doing something, but at the same time, all the information I was getting was secondhand. I'm not like DJ and Rev, and I don't get all this information months in advance. So I figured I might as well just do it my normal day of. And I will try to keep my pessimism and my somewhat anger towards what this patch is releasing. Um, it probably will not work out well. So in advance, there will be lots of ranting in this. And I really see <clears throat> some What Was You Thinking videos coming up this month. So be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. If that is something you want to be alerted to. So here we go. Update number 60. Get into the patch notes. The crew of the Enterprise under Captain Picard encounters a new alien species, the Torvath. They're distinctly non-human, closer to prawn species, though on a much larger scale with a much more visceral appearance. They are technolo technologically evolved civilization, and it will be and it will be revealed they have a high sense of culture, but they are... That didn't make sense. And it will be revealed. Well, you're, you're telling us now. Okay. It's weird. They are also highly xenophobic and strongly believe themselves to be superior. First, they are amused by the humans who attempt to make contact and befriend them. Like we might feel about a baby rodent. For that feeling turns to disgust and paranoia as they learn of the Federation, what they consider to be dangerous, rival hegemony, assuming I'm pronouncing that word right, I don't know that I have ever seen or heard that word, of unlike abominations, must be wiped out if the cosmos is to remain pure for the Torvath. Can Picard convince them that peaceful coexistence is possible, or does the Alpha Quadrant faith face another galaxy spanning conflict? Okay. I'm not familiar with the Torvath. Is this something new that they're creating, which is nice? May need some work on a storyline, it does seem meh. It's fine, I guess. I guess I know what I'm going to get to in this patch notes, and I'm <laughs> like pre ranting on everything now. Alright, so what's coming up in this update sixty? Brand new ship, Borg Cube. You can now fly a Borg ship. Okay. I, I guess that is something we've been asking for. I... <clears throat> I haven't seen that many requests for it. That's just me personally. And... I don't know that I actually care. But, again, that's a personal thing. Oh, players have been requesting this feature. And I'm thinking, self-destruct, finally! Because flying around in a board cube doesn't sound that appealing. Of course, I have been playing this game. So I know what <laughs> the people making this board cube would probably do to it. G6 expansion, yay! I don't know whether I'm happy or not. New officers, new primes, of course. New missions, new cosmetics, new battle pass, and more. 
why they couldn't just list it. Okay. The Borg Cube. I mean, it's it's a cube. It's black and it's green. For the first time, Commanders 28 and above will have the opportunity to add the Borg Cube to their fleet. The Borg Cube is unique in various ways that separate itself from any other ship in Star Trek Fleet Command. The Borg Cube is the first ship that grows in power alongside its commander. Yeah, sure it will. I'm skeptic. At Ops 28, the Borg Cube grows in power based on the strength of your faction's ships. Not likely. Scaling all the way to operations level 70. Not likely. The Borg Cube has the first ever active ship ability, Borg Cutting Beam, that does damage outside of normal combat. A full unlock of the Borg Cube is available in the Elite Battle Pass, and several of those blueprints are located in the Free Path. An official, detailed, free-to-play path best of my knowledge at this point, hasn't been announced, but we have been promised by, you know, the big content creators, Rev Deuce, DJs, who were promised by the people running the show here, that by the end of the year, you will be able to get this thing free to play. <clears throat> well, we're in November now, so two months to free to play is pretty good. I mean, you understand that you can't give it to people on day one. So, yeah, I mean, it's not bad. Well, the ship is unique as this. We wanted to provide as much information. Okay, so more information on the tab already loaded up here. Feature spotlight on the board cube. Yeah. Where's uh, the export? So it's kind of, we got this cube from the ex Borg faction. Cool. Now we have a piece of their technology it's at your disposal. Okay. Work is all available, all commanders 28 and above. Blueprints, yes. Meant to grow with you. Scales based on the power of your faction ships. War Cube is formal and will be on par or better with your faction ship's power. Not likely. Because there is a number of researches that increase your ship based on the faction. Now, are there researchers for this board cube? Yes. Are there as many as, let's say, things that affect your faction ship? Like, have you done all the Romulan research for Romulan ships? Is this board cube equal to that? I, I don't think so. So, I don't know how it can be better. But, okay. And really what they mean by this is there are warp interlocks which is kind of like a gate not allowing you to tear up until you reach a certain milestone. But, instead of it being like ops level which the first few are What's this? Tier 2 and Tier 3 are obfuscated, but after that it goes by a faction ship. G3 Epic, Tier 3, any of the G3 Epics at Tier 3 will allow you to get the ship to the board cube to Tier 4. At the same time, let's say for me example, I actually don't have my Corvus at Tier 6, though I, I could. Right now, I have it. it the, I only have the cargo bay and the warp range. Well, I mean, the warp drive, I guess it is. So I could, so I could potentially get my board cube up to tier 10. I mean, that's and supposedly, supposedly, we'll see how well this works. If you get, like, say, me. The way I understand it, if I get my Corvus up to tier 6, then all this stuff before it doesn't mean anything. 
Like say, I don't have to go get a G5, G4 Epic and tier it up to 4 and then 8 to get my board cube up to tier 8 and tier 9. Supposedly, that is how it's supposed to go. You don't have to go back and get a previous level of ship. Supposedly. We'll see how that actually works. Yes, of course I'm skeptical that that isn't going to work right. But we'll see. Yeah, most powerful ship. Sure. It will surpass the strongest epic faction ship. Then why are we getting faction ships? Oh, just so we can upgrade the board. What? I don't know. Board cutting beam. On top of its natural combat prowess, the board cube has a cutting beam, one of its one of a kind active ship ability that allows you to damage outside of normal combat. To charge a cutting beam, you must deal hull damage in normal combat situations with the board cube. I was told in what I heard from all the streams the, last night, eight hostiles. You kill eight, eight hostiles and you can press your little button to target a ship with the cutting beam. It is not an insta-kill weapon. It is not an insta-kill weapon. Anybody that's saying otherwise is wrong. <clears throat> we fire. Uh, once charged, you may select a ship you wish to fire upon from anywhere in the system and select the board cutting beam icon on the any enemy pop-up window. So similar to the way the Mantis Sting works. You select whatever target for the Mantis. You would see a little red box below, scan and attack. That is supposedly where it is. Note, the board cutting beam cannot be used on armadas. Of course it can't be. It can't be used on stations or Alliance Star Bases. Also, the board cutting beam will have diminishing returns on its damage when attacking a target a higher ops level than you are. Of course. There's always a catch. Borg beam. Borg is also unique that it will bypass all defenses and does direct hull damage. So that is something. It doesn't. It's not affected by mitigation. It's not affected by isolytic defense. It's not affected by shields. Right to the hull. Exactly the number it's supposed to deal. Current officers in Star Trek Fleet Command and Research, not found specifically for the Borg Cube, will not affect its damage or rate of charge. Disappointing. Destroying hostiles with the Borg Cutting Beam provides full loot that you will, full loot that you would typically gain from the target, as well as technological distinctiveness this the tongue twister technological distinctiveness is a new currency used to upgrade the research and the board cube itself I think it's actually something that you have to go refine into either research shit or ship shit however you have to kill the target from what I understand you have to kill the target with the cutting beam so, if you come down here, if you're at Tier 2, base PvE damage is 36,000. If your opponent has more than 36,000 hull, you will not kill your opponent with the Cutting Beam. So, that's what I mean. It is not a go-home cannon. It is not an insta-kill cannon. It is a cannon that does lots of damage. That's it. There is a downside. Like say me. <clears throat> and something I posted on Red Deuce's video. And I already got people yelling at me. Oh just go kill freebooters with it. Go kill freebooters with it. Well when you get to ship. I'll be at tier 1. Well I'm a level 55. So 
I want to kill level 55 freebooters. Can I kill level 55 freebooters with this? No. I can't do the grind for the board cube on my normal hostiles. So what is it? It's another grind loop. This isn't removing any loop. This is another loop. So that's one reason why I'm not happy. I, I don't want another fucking loop. It's another loop. No matter how you spin it, it is another loop for you to grind on. And here's more. What did I say I could get to with my Corvus? Tier 10. Another reason why base PVE damage of a tier 10 is 17 million. Maybe it's just me, but yes, I am a 55. I don't go kill 55 freebooters. I go kill level 60 freebooters because I'm not a fucking noob. Okay? I want the better rewards, so I kill the level 60 hostiles. Can I kill a level 60 hostile with this? Even with a tier 10 board cube, can I kill a level 60 freebooter with this? No. You have a lot more than 17 million hull. It needs to be what? Multiplied by 5. Maybe I'll be able to kill. No, actually, you know what? No, because they're over 100 million. Right? Unless they add some more research, it does more damage to it. <clears throat> so, and yes, I don't have the cube yet, so I don't know. Just based on what I'm reading, this for me is going to be like the Defiant. All flash and no substance. I don't see this as well designed. It doesn't do enough damage in PvE. It doesn't do enough damage in PvP. My Corvus has a hundred million hull on it. What tier do you need to be to do a hundred million? Tier 13. Which according to this chart up here, tier 13 is equal to a G5 epic. How is that better? How is that going to be better than my Corvus? I don't know. That... It doesn't. It doesn't sound better to me. I'm not seeing any evidence that is that makes this better. By destroying enemies with your board cutting beam, you will be rewarded with technological distinctiveness. This material can only be seen in the battle log after destroying a hostile PS. As of right now, there is a problem with the battle log, so you won't see that if you had the Borg Cube now. The amount of technological, distinct, technological distinctiveness you receive will increase based on the level of hostile you kill with the cutting beam. So you want to kill a bigger hostile. You don't want to do your normal grinding in whatever system it is you do grinding. Realize that you can't one-shot your enemy with the board cutting beam and have to go to another system just to use it. And you, you can't stack it. You can't kill eight hostiles, <clears throat> whatever number it actually is. And then go kill another hostile, eight hostiles, and then go kill another eight hostiles and have three shots stacked up. As far as I hear, you can't do that. You have to kill your eight hostiles, then go use the cutting beam, and then kill more eight hostiles. Okay. Technological distinctiveness dropped by a certain level of hostiles. <clears throat> it's nice that they told us these numbers, but we don't really know at this point how much technological distinctiveness you actually need, so... I don't know. I mean, you see right here, let's say a level 60 freebooter, 2100 technological doo bobs. A level 55, since I am a level 55, I would get 
700 less. Yes, I want to kill the bigger target. I don't want, if I can't kill the bigger target like I currently am doing, then it's not better than my current ship. <clears throat> this material can be exchanged in a refinery by navigating the board cube refinery spot in the support tab for either upgrade material to tear up your board cube or for material needed to progress the new board cube researches, which can Mm, which can be found in the Xborg research tree. As you progress your Borg cube, you will need Borg data nodes from one of the three factions, Federation, Klingon, Romulan. Upon reaching one of the above milestones with your faction ship, that's what they were talking about with the tier of G3 epics, G4 uncommons, and so on and so forth. That's what they're getting on here now. You will be rewarded with a board data node from the corresponding faction, which can be claimed in the gifts tab. This means that if you so choose, you can acquire and tier up three board cubes. Note, if you already have a faction ship high enough for, say, a tier eight board cube, then you will get all board data nodes needed to get to tier eight. Again, they say that, but we will... We're going to have to see if that works for every, because it's for every so level, so many levels of ships, we don't know that all of them are going to work. It is possible that one or two of these tier or classes of ships just maybe got left off the list, which does happen. It, it does. I understand that. So... Something to try to keep an eye on. And if you do see problems, if you're one of the people that buys it, you see it, you know, call it out. I mean, but y'all are good at doing that. <clears throat> this power never seen before, and we know you will use it well. Okay. All right. <clears throat> All right, let's get back to the main patch notes. G6 expansion. Yay. Many moons ago, Grade 5 was released Star Trek Fleet Command. We've seen many of you face the challenge provided with this expansion. Climb ranks all the way to Operation 60. The more we learn about the galaxy, the more questions arise. This much D6 available for offering. New level cap, level 70. New hazard systems. 13 new faction ships. I'm not sure why that isn't divisible by 3. Federation, Romulan, Klingon. I mean, is one of them the Borg Cube? And then therefore there are four levels of faction ships in G6? I don't know. 120 new systems. Yeah, new deep, deep, dark, deep, dark space. Deep, deep, dark space. Another section way past deep dark space for each of the three factions. 700, uh, not 700, 275 missions and much more. Okay. New officers. Mm. Two new officers available this month. The epic Miss Picard. I don't know what MIS is, is for, but to me it's Miss. It, it, what, yeah, I, I don't know what it, I, no, I haven't got, and rare, Miss Data. Not really what you came up with? Of course, then you look at this, Epic Enterprise E Picard. So which is it? Is it? Epic Enterprise E Picard, or is it Epic Miss Picard? Okay. But it's definitely not Miss Picard because that is clearly a man. <clears throat> Whew. Wow. Captain's Maneuver Increase awards your ship receives from hostiles by 60%, increasing by an additional 20% slash 40% based on tier. I'm sorry, this is a captain ability. Are you saying captain ability now increases with the tier of the officer? Or is this supposed to read as synergy? Okay. 
I get that they're, they're typos, but I think you kind of need to. Maybe that's what happens when you stop giving other officers captain abilities, like, say, the rare. Oh, spoiler alert, the rare data doesn't have a captain ability. Which is kind of silly because he was captain of a ship for, my God, I can't even remember what show that was. Big, large maneuver they were doing against, was it the Romulans, right? Officer ability, we used to be explorers. Each time your ship hits with a weapon, each time your ship hits with a weapon, increase isolated cascade damage by a percent for three rounds against hostiles. Three, five, six, ten, and fifteen percent. It does say each time, so I assume that does stack. But the stacks only last for three rounds. Enterprise E data. So again, not missed data. Officer ability. Increase isolated cascade damage by a percent against non-armada hostiles. Can't do anything else but cascade damage, I guess. 10, 15, 20, 30, 40%. Why is that better than Picard's? Depends on how many weapons you got. Does it? Does it? It depends on how many weapons you got. Lower level players, data is absolutely going to be better. I mean, as far as this damage goes. That's odd. But low deck ability. Increase the ship's base max cargo by a percent. Are you fucking kidding me? Another one? Instead of copy and pasting below deck abilities, can you just make the below deck ability of the other officer bigger? I mean, didn't we just get this last month? For Alonzo Freeman? I understand we want more cargo. Sometimes, I mean, this is a war game. Do you always want more cargo? Not necessarily. So this is, and how many below deck spots do you think we have? Can you fit lawn and data below deck? Along with Hugh, if you're grinding hostiles, you want Hugh. You probably want 10, need more haul. Can't fit them all. Okay. <clears throat> new research. There are two new prime researchers that will be available this month. G3 to G5 prime research efficiency. I wanted to find this one and see if it gave more detail because I don't like the detail in that. It just says increase cost efficiency. For G3 and G5 research by 200%. One 200% doesn't sound like that much. And it just says cost efficiency. So what is it? And I'm reading it right here in game. Increase the base research cost efficiency for G3 through G5 materials and resources. So dilithium, par steel, tritanium plus. Or crystal and gas. 200% seems kind of low. It really does. Like it's just not going to do that much. Because there's so many other things. It's just. Like on a 10 billion research. I think it's only going to take off half a billion. Maybe 1 billion. That's. That's just not that much. It's really not. Prime junking speed. Increase scrap speed by 200%. Now look, if you're not going to increase the rewards for scrapping a G4 ship, then who the fuck cares about this? Who? I, no, I, I don't think anybody should buy this because I don't think it's, it's that worth it. 
look, I, I know you want to, you have script, sh scripts or scripts of scrap, ships of scrap, and you want it to go faster so you can scrap the next one, but 200%, at least for scrapping speed, it's going to be a little more because there are less researchers that actually affect scrapping speed, so surface value, this does a little bit more than that research cost efficiency. But you, you really don't get that much from scrapping sh ships because the D4 scrap is, is, is terrible. Except for the jellyfish. But, I mean, for me, it takes like five days. I mean, the epics, the G3 epics, yeah, they take like six days, but you don't get that much from them. I mean, they're nice, but I just... I don't know if I see this prime being worth it too much. 16 new missions. These are the new, your new enemies. <laughs> Just look. <laughs> wow, okay. <laughs> I mean, nice drawing. Good job. It's just, wow, really? <laughs> What is this, Starship Troopers? Are they really taking things from all these other movies now? I mean, our enemies are now the enemies from Starship Troopers. We've already been flying around in an X-Wing and a Y-Wing. The Talios and the Monavine. Look at them. And now, we're getting a ship that has the ability of a Death Star. Or cute missions, hero versus villains missions, new cosmetics. Yay, fancy looking Enterprise ship. All right, cool. Oh, and look, they have more bug fixes. Most two, yeah, I don't care about the bug fixes. All right, so. Yes, we will have to get this Borg Cube ship. First, before give too many comments on it, I understand that. Don't have the ship yet. So, all the things I think are going to be wrong with it are not proven yet. Not true. It's just me being grumpy. Maybe angry. I did think about going with the grumpy rhino, but I figured that was there's a grumpy cat out there somewhere. So I figured it was too copy, copycatting. That, and I think I yell and swear a lot, so that's more angry than grumpy. Supposedly, this is from Ultimate DJs. Well, I wanted to watch Rev, but Becca wanted to listen to Ultimate DJs, so we listened to Ultimate DJs. Yeah, I could have gone to another room, but that, I mean, it just seems weird, but, however. Ultimate DJ says, actually, I think Rev said it in this video, I'll watch this video later. Day 8? Alright, what's in my eye? Got my hair cut, so I think. Alright. Supposedly, day 8 is when you can get the ship for 20 bucks. I'm going to buy the battle pass. I mean, I usually do anyway. So, a week from now, I'll have this ship. And we'll get into some testing. But, until then, yeah, I'm going to be very skeptical. And, but, I think I have some right to be skeptical. I mean, until I get the ship to the tier that... According to these patch notes, says is equal to my Corvus. I will have to grind specifically for this ship. And I don't like that idea. And you have to make sure your cutting beam can kill the target to get the rewards necessary to grind the loot for this ship. 
Yes, there are going to be times where you cannot grind your normal level of hostiles. You have to hit down. I'm sorry. The numbers they're saying with this cutting beam are not big enough. My Corvus does more. Not going to be able to one-shot it. It's not win the battle. It isn't win the battle. It isn't. You have to kill it with the cutting beam to get the loot. I didn't see too many researchers in here for the cutting beam. I saw one, but it was cost efficiency, which I don't really understand. Increase base cost efficiency of the Borg's cutting beam. I don't understand that. I didn't think it was going to require juice. thought you had to kill eight hostiles. So I don't know what increased base cost efficiency for a Borg cube's cutting beam is going to look like. Less hostiles to kill, maybe? I don't know, because you're supposed to not have to use juice to activate this thing. But according to this research, it's what it sounds like. All right, got to get out of here. This is a long enough video. Comment below. Am, am I the only one that hasn't asked for a board cube to fly around with? Have, have you out there wanted a Borg cube? I know me, when I heard all these hints out there, it's like, oh, it's old track and it's new track and it's something players have been asking for for several years. I was thinking, self-destruct function. I mean, is are the Borg really old track? Well, I guess it depends on how you define old track is. Were the Borg in the original series? Sure that that's sort of the really old, their old Trek. Again, depends on what you mean by old Trek. How excited are you for G6? You ready to go drop thousands of dollars? Oh, you know what? Did I see it in here? I thought I saw it. There's new, there's new currency. They didn't put this in the patch notes, but, and I may have alluded to this, but I first heard it on Tiberius. You know, those old level primes, you know, for ship parts and cost efficiency for the, for the ship parts, for the ship components. And they specifically said, ore, crystal, gas, par steel, tritanium, dilithium. Yeah. Not exactly what you were going to be using for G6. So what do you think about that? Your dilithium is no longer as useful as it used to be. Your par seal the same way going into G6. Now it is a supposedly a form of par steel and a form of tritanium and a form of dilithium, but they are not created equal. So, new currencies, which for some reason are not in the patch notes, which I, I don't like. There's a new form of currency for G6. It should be in here. Be sure to like and subscribe. I am the Angry Rhino. Shields up, commanders.